Hello mga kablero. This video is related to quantitative research and statistical analysis and this is the introduction of this video series. So I have created this video series to teach you on how to perform a statistical analysis. I have conceptualized a very easy to follow step-by-step -step process so that students who are new to the world of statistics can comprehend the terminologies and purpose of doing each of the statistical tools in coming up with a conclusion for your research. So without further ado, here is the step-by-step -step process that I am pertaining to and which we are going to follow in analyzing our data, which of course I personally selected to show you how effective this method would be in answering our basic research problem. So this is the quantitative research statistical analysis process, which I have created to um, make the statistical analysis simpler for students who are new to statistics. And it begins with the problem assessment for the variables. And of course, in research, we always begin with a problem. I have a, a video from my previous um, series where I explained what is the essence of, or what are what is the step by step process of creating a, a good research project, and it all it always starts with determining the problem. So once we have the problem, we can now assess what our what are our variables, and it will be followed by generating the hypothesis. So of course we have assumptions in mind that what if this specific variable is related to this variable. And if they are both related, are they directly proportional or are they inversely proportional with each other, right? So the relationship and also the significance with each other. The next step is creating the questionnaire. We will be determining the sampling technique. And of course we have two different types of sampling technique. We have the probabilistic and the non-probabilistic. But in the current scenario for quantitative research, we usually use the random sampling, which is part of or an example of probabilistic uh, sampling technique. It will be followed by calculating the sample size. Now, afterwards, we will decide who are our recipients and then conduct the survey. And then as soon as we receive the survey uh, responses, we can now consolidate and finalize the database. We validate the completeness of the database, and then we use an analytical tool or a software. And in this case, we will be using Microsoft Excel, but we can therefore, we can still use other analytical tools like MATLAB or other tools in the inter uh, available in the internet, right? So our first goal, as soon as we validate and complete our, or the completeness of our data, we will create an FDT. And what is an FDT? FDT stands for Frequency Distribution Table. And before we arrive to the creation of the FDT, we will be determining first the maximum and minimum values on our data set. And from that, we can generate or we can compute for the range. We can compute for our class bin, the class interval, and then we generate the FDT. And using MS Excel, it's pretty easy, pretty cool. So we will move forward and just uh, complete this introduction. And we will dive into uh, the use of the Microsoft Excel in uh, analyzing our data. The next step is to perform a descriptive statistics, although this is just like a, a, a single block, but it does compose of several statistical tools inside. So descriptive statistics may include the uh, measurement of measure of central tendencies like the mean, median, and mode. Uh, very, uh, very familiar with that. Uh, we also have the skewness and the kurtosis. We have the variance and then the standard deviation and so on and so forth, right? And we will be creating a summary of the table for our descriptive statistics. We will not end on the descriptive statistics alone, but we will move forward to perform the inferential statistics. 
And in the inferential, inferential statistics, we can test our hypothesis if we will be accepting or rejecting our null hypothesis to be specific. And from that, perform after we perform the inferential statistics, we will be summarizing the uh, inferential statistics output into a table. And the second to the last is analysis of the result to test the hypothesis. And we, we will not show we will not only show you a single inferential statistics example in this in this venture, we will be using um, we will be using Pearson's correlation. We we'll, we can we can also show uh, linear regression. And our main goal here is to predict right. We will be able to predict the monthly expenses. I'll be giving you the example later on, but we will be predicting the expected monthly expenses of a person with just only giving the age. And that is pretty cool activity. And the last but not least step on our statistical analysis process is drawing conclusions from our inferences. So let's move forward and our example for this activity is, uh, I, I gave you a preview earlier, and our goal is to create a statistical analysis regarding the relationship between the age and monthly expenses of a working person in a corp corporate world. And we will also try to predict the expected monthly expenses of a person in peso value. Of course, we're in the Philippines. And based on their age, using data analysis function in Microsoft Excel. Okay, so what is our problem? So our problem is to determine the effect of age in the expenses of a working professional in a company with 84 total population and diverse age bracket. So in this uh, activity, based on and based on the problem we can therefore generate or we can determine which which of which are our de dependent variable and also our independent variable so the variables that we have here are the dependent variable is also known as the criterion and the independent variable is also known as the predictor and based on the review of our problem, the dependent variable, which is, of course, when we say dependent, it can vary and it can change, right? It can change, but the independent variable does not change. So in this example, the independent variable or the predictor is the age and the criteria which uh, varies from that independent variable that is our monthly expenses and from the create from the determination of the dependent and independent variable we can now create our null hypothesis and let's go back to our steps and we are on the first assessment of the uh, of the of the problem for the variables the next is generating the hypothesis and our hypothesis is the age, and this is very specific, it's the null hypothesis. And it says the age of a working professional is a significant indicator of his or her monthly expenses. That is a very straightforward hypothesis. We, we don't know as of yet if age has a direct relationship with the monthly expenses or is it inversely proportional so as you go grow older the monthly expenses it, does it increase or does it decrease right now that is our main goal of this activity so after uh getting or after creating your null hypothesis so our next step would be creating the questionnaire and that is uh, the next step on our um, statistical analysis process. We have generated the hypothesis. So uh, par pardon if I move backwards on, on this specific slide, uh, just to show you um, where we are on the statistical analysis process steps, right? So we're done with the first three we create, or we're done with the first two, we now create the questionnaire. and. 
the content of the administered questionnaire is very straightforward where it all it is only asking for a rough estimate of their of the monthly expenses and of course their age that's the first question and um it's specific that you give a rough estimate of your monthly expenses in philippine peso right so the next step after creating the questionnaire is what would be our sampling technique so as i gave you a preview we will, we will be using or we usually use random sampling which is considered as a, a probabilistic method of sampling because this is a non-biased sampling right we don't uh, cherry pick um, people to answer our um, survey questionnaire and that is to avoid bias on our response or in our data right and in this example, we will be we have used the very famous Lovins equation, which is n or the sample size or the number of samples is equal to the total population divided by one plus the no total population multiplied by the margin of error raised to two or squared. And using this equation, we have computed that our sample size is equal to 69 and later on um, on in the next video i will show you the uh, computation using microsoft excel right to give you a, a background on how to use the formulas in microsoft excel in computing our sample size so out of 84 employees we have randomly selected 69 individuals or employees to answer our survey questionnaire and we then consolidate the responses, which was easily obtained since the survey was, of course, distributed online. All right. So um, we will be showing you another video later on to give you uh, the computation part and using Microsoft Excel to give you the table of the responses. So. This is the end of this presentation because I would like to create or partition uh, this video to be able to give emphasis to each of the steps and not to bombard everything on a single video. All right, so uh, watch out for the, the upcoming video which covers the next steps on, on our statistical analysis which covers uh, the consolidation of the database, the validation of the completeness of the data, and using Microsoft Excel to generate an FDT. And that is the next video, which is coming up shortly. Thank you so much. And uh, please share this video to those who are creating or working on their research problem. Bye-bye.